Welcome to a special highlight video for the Forza Horizon 4 S1 Olympic Games qualifiers, our final video before the championship, as we get a few loose ends sorted out before our nations can move on to the big race to see who will take home Olympic gold. Now, while you may think that since our national qualifiers are all finished up, that our lineup for the championship is set, but a few complications have arisen and the Olympic Committee has handed down a resolution on how we are to proceed. But before we get into all that, though, we need to take it all the way back to the beginning of our Olympics for a little explanation of a feud between two particular nations that has fueled some controversy behind the scenes of our qualifying events. If you've been following us from the beginning, then perhaps you'll know that this rivalry is a course between the two Scandinavian nations of Sweden and Denmark. Bitter rivals in all things competitive, these two have been fueling some drama ever since the inception of the Olympic Games. Now, of course, with Sweden having a few notable car manufacturers, it was quite expected that they would compete for Olympic gold, particularly with at least one standout competitor from the famed hypercar manufacturer Koenigsegg. Denmark, however, has never had any significant auto manufacturing presence, so when the Swedish found out that the Danes had entered a low-production hypercar of their own, the Zenvo ST1, which you can see here, they were initially upset that the Olympic Committee allowed them to compete, feeding rumors that the Danish were attempting to buy their way into the competition with a vehicle that was barely able to compete in the S1 class to begin with. On top of this, while Sweden was able to enter three Volvos into the competition, their one and only hypercar competitor, the Koenigsegg CCX, had been inexplicably barred from the competition. While the official Olympic response claimed that this was because Sweden had not had an example of the car prepared in time for the preliminary roster deadline, the Swedes were outraged and blamed the Danes for blocking their star entrant into the competition in order to compete with their Zenvo against the Volvos, weakening Sweden's chances, of course. It was for this reason that Sweden's lineup for its qualifier was made up of only three Volvos and nothing else, with a significant presence lacking from Koenigsegg. The Swedes had subsequently prepared an example of their, Kon of their CCX, for competition and appeal to the Olympic Committee continuously throughout our qualifying stages until today in order to, to grant them a late entrant into their qualifying event. However, the Danish, as one of the first nations to qualify on track, were unable to put up any impressive numbers with their Zenvo despite its impressive power and torque numbers and overall performance levels, due primarily in part to the fact that with so much power and a rear-wheel drive setup, the car was unable to make any grip at all and simply couldn't get a good time on the track with too much wheel spin. It was for this reason, in fact, that the Olympic Committee instated the rule that we have now that rear-wheel drive cars were allowed to use traction control if available. However, this rule was put in place after the Dutch had run qualifiers with their Donkervoort D8 and after the Danish had run theirs with the Zenvo ST1. Because of this sudden rule change, the Zenvo was allowed to run one extra lap with traction control, and it did put up a time of 3.22 compared to 3.25 without it, and the 322 still stands on our lap board currently today. Now this is what the Dutch and the Danish have been lobbying for all this time, as naturally they feel that they deserve a full five lap retest for their cars with whatever setup they choose with the option of using traction control. While all of this is going on in the background, the Olympic Committee has now handed down a resolution just today, granting the wishes of all three parties. And so today we are going to see first a full five-lap retest of the Netherlands Donkervoort D8 GTO. Second, we shall indeed see a full five-lap qualifying run from Sweden's Koenigsegg CCX competing for Sweden in order to potentially knock out the Volvo 242 Turbo from contention. And third, a full five-lap retest of Denmark's Zenvo ST1. So the big story here, of course, is the battle between the two hypercar manufacturers and the nations of Scandinavia as each desperately seeks to outmatch the other, and as we've seen already, they'll stop at nothing to get themselves a leg up on track. Juicy stuff here to be sure, so before we watch some race footage, let's take a closer look at what these nations have done to prepare their vehicles. Now, first up, we're taking a quick look at the Netherlands single entrant, the Donkervoort D8 GTO. This was the first vehicle to run its qualifying lap on our track and was forced to swap over to an all-wheel drive setup because of the intolerable wheel spin without traction control, which ended up limiting its already heavily reduced top speed and made it perform as the worst entrant to qualify for the championship with a time of 324 and the second worst overall, only beating out France's front-wheel drive disaster, the Citroën DS3. The Dutch were never offered a retest of their vehicle, and as they're a bit more on the non-confrontational side, didn't speak up about it until the Danish demanded a retest for their entrant as well. But if we take a look more at the car itself, though, you can see that the Dockervoort is a very unique vehicle designed as a super lightweight track toy. 
more closely resembling an overpowered go-kart than a traditional full-sized car, but has all the necessary equipment needed to make it a street-legal vehicle, and is powered by a 2.5-liter Audi-sourced five-cylinder engine, and is obviously incredibly light, making for some serious power-to-weight numbers, and remarkably nimble track performance. For this retest, the Dutch have in fact gone with rear-wheel drive utilizing traction control, and have tuned the engine up to 703 horsepower, and at only 1,278 pounds, it makes this car by far the best power-to-weight ratio of any competitor in the Olympics. This car is definitely all handling, though, and its biggest weakness is speed, as it was initially only making meager top speed numbers, but the Dutch have squeezed every ounce of speed they could from this car and have managed to get its top speed up to 206 miles per hour, which should be enough to do well on Kensington Downs, provided that it can take those corners like the nimble track car it is. All right, the Donkervoort taking to the track and off the line. Starting off our retests today, let's see how it can do in the corners. Coming back now for its third lap. Putting up 320.7, slowly chipping away at its time. But looking to do even better. Gonna have to try real hard out of those corners to get just the right line and keep that speed. And perhaps a better time. Coming down now to the bridge chicane. Looks like a pretty solid turn there. And carrying out, clips that one on the outer edge. Donkervoort now coming in for its final lap. And let's see the time on the board. A 317.799, a very respectable time. And a significant jump up from the bottom of the qualifying leaderboards. And now let's take a look at the late entrant from Sweden that's finally been allowed to compete today, the 2006 Koenigsegg CCX. This car is the only Koenigsegg model that qualified for the S1 category as all their other vehicles are put all the way up into S2 from the get-go. But this one, Koenigsegg's flagship model from the 2000s, finally stands ready to compete for Sweden to see if it can put up a better time than the Volvo 242 Turbo currently sitting at at 321.9 as the lowest entrant qualifying for the championship, actually. Now, since the Danish's primary problem of wheel spin has stemmed from their inability to all-wheel drive swap their Zenvo and stay within S1, the Swedish have taken their opportunity to all-wheel drive swap the CCX and taken what few points in S1 they had left and put them into a few platform upgrades here and give them a good setup that should put the power down as it attempts to use its top speed of 250 to make a good run. So if you look over at the numbers here for the Koenigsegg, it's got 806 horsepower, 678 pound-feet of torque, and weighing in at just under 3,000 pounds. It's pretty good all around there. You take a look at the tuning numbers, you can get an idea of what it's capable of here. It has some good acceleration numbers with the all-wheel drive, and an impressive top speed, but lacks a bit in handling, so it seems to be a question of whether or not you can put down enough of that speed on the straightaway and around the track as well. Let's take a look at the run from the pride of Sweden. All right, the long-awaited Koenigsegg CCX finally taking to the track to see what it can do for Sweden, having to beat a 321.9 to qualify. Coming down through the reservoir straight section here, trying to keep as much speed as possible. Doing quite well, making it all the way up to 190. The CCX powering down the back straight. And continuing to climb all the way up to 224, looks like. Coming up to the Horizon Town Corners here, it looks like the Koenigsegg is struggling a little for grip with some understeer. And the Koenigsegg is now coming down to the wire for its final lap. And what do we have on the board? 318.655, meaning that the Koenigsegg CCX qualifies for Sweden, beating Denmark's Zenvo ST1 by 4 seconds until, perhaps, its retest lap coming up next. Alright, and our final vehicle showcase today is the Zenvo ST1, running its retest as our final race of the qualifiers. After Sweden's respectable time of 3.18 and the Netherlands' impressive run shooting those two nations up from the bottom, the Danish are looking to take some revenge and make their way to a better place than last out of the nations. And from what we found out here, the Danish, ever the clever ones, have apparently have a little trick up their sleeve. Of course, while the Zenvo has always had a wealth of hypercar level power and torque, 
Its biggest problem was always its inability to utilize all-wheel drive to put that power down onto the pavement. Though we all thought it was impossible, including the Swedish, the Danish have now actually found a way to swap their vehicle to all-wheel drive, and they're doing it by using drag slick tires instead of standard or racing tires. Now, to many, including the Swedish, this seems absurd and perhaps even impossible, but the Olympic Committee has inspected the vehicle and confirmed that it does, in fact, meet S1 requirements and will race as intended. What this means is that the Zenvo ST1 will be able to use all of its 1,086 horsepower and 1,054 pound-feet of torque to the maximum potential with a tremendous amount of grip that drag slicks provide for acceleration and launch. But this does come at a steep price, however, because slick tires, of course, have no surface to counteract slippage while turning, and as such, the Zenvo will suffer from drastically reduced handling ability. To see just how insane this really is, though, let's take a look at the tuning numbers here. And here we can see the real insanity of this setup, because we have 1.171, 0 to 60, and 2.798 seconds from 0 to 100 is absolutely insane acceleration. Far better than anything we've seen in the field, which means it knocks out the Corvette ZR1's position as best in acceleration by nearly half the time from 0 to 100 almost. But again, we can see that the price the Zenvo pays for this is in handling as it only has 0.93 and 0.98 for lateral Gs at 60 miles per hour and 120 miles per hour, making it by far the worst handling entrant of them all. Just as we thought this rivalry couldn't get any crazier, Denmark manages to come back for some revenge against the Swedes. So let's take a look at how this crazy Zenvo setup is going to do in its qualifying retest. Alright, Denmark's chance for revenge is now. And here it is, blasting away from the start. Look at this, just absolutely taking over everyone on the field. Interesting to see how this acceleration is going to do. Zenvo attempting to take the S-curves, those drag tires squealing as it tries to hold on. Can we take it at 183 and blasts up now? As much as it can out of there, 214. And here comes Denmark coming in for its second lap, the Zenvo ST1. Powering away. And a 318.257 means that it just barely beats the Koenigsegg CCX's time. The Zenvo up to 215 this time, and there you have it, classic Denmark taking advantage of the controversial Ford Mustang brick wall maneuver. I expect nothing less from Denmark. And here it comes, the Zenvo ST1 finishing off our qualifying events for its last lap. And an incredible lap it was indeed, even with such little handling, a 315.626, an absolutely incredible time. And blasting the Zenvo ST1 actually up to the number three spot behind the Ford GT and the Porsche Carrera GT, but ahead of the Maserati MC12. So really incredible stuff here from Denmark. What a revenge play against the Swedes. We'll see how that acceleration one-trick pony setup, though, is going to do in the championship. All right, well, there you have it, folks. With those three loose ends tied up, we now have our final qualifying leaderboard set in stone, confirmed by the committee that we are going on next to the championships. Here's the entire leaderboard for the S1 Olympic qualifiers, completely up to date. And we can see that our three competitors today managed to bump up their places significantly, as the Netherlands moved up from the lowest nation to number 7 out of 11, with an impressive jump of 7 seconds off its original time. Then we saw the Koenigsegg CCX outpace the Volvo 242 Turbo to take the Swedish crown with a time of 318, finally getting their chance to show off their superiority over the Danish. But of course Denmark wasn't content to let them be beat by Sweden. And with that absurd acceleration setup and a bit of liberal track usage, Denmark shot up from dead last to number 3 on the leaderboard, beating out Italy's incredible Maserati MC12 with another 7 second improvement over its original time. One final note before we move on, the Olympic Committee has officially handed down a statement saying that the improper use of any exterior object to slow the vehicle's momentum down more than its brakes can afford is completely banned from here on out and shall result in a striking of that vehicle's lap from contention. Now any vehicle that has used this in the past, of course, will have its lap stay as is, but 
in the future, there will be no use of any brick walls or any objects of any kind to slow the vehicle down. So Denmark getting theirs in first. And celebration are certainly in order for the Danish camp as they really showed the Swedes today. But the drama continues because the Swedish racing team has put out an ominous statement going into the championships, which I will read now for you. It reads, The nation of Sweden accepts the committee's ruling in the case of the Danish Zenvo ST1 and understands that Sweden's qualifying lap shall stand as is. But after preliminary testing going into the championship, we formally announce to the nation of Denmark and to all Olympic competitors that our engineers have devised a novel performance setup for the Koenigsegg CCX that has proven its potential to change the nature of the competition. We welcome your opposition and wish you the best of luck in the championship event. Now, if that wasn't ominous enough, the Swedes have actually attached a grainy photograph that appears to show an unofficial chronograph reading that clocks the Koenigsegg CCX in at a time of 312.090, which, if true, could certainly mean a game-changing level of competition from the Swedish delegation. All of this sure is exciting, but the Olympic Committee has reminded us to provide the disclaimer that this, of course, constitutes no substantial evidence of any performance numbers officially verified, and as such, all we can say is that we hope that it is true and that something monstrous is brewing in the nation of Sweden. But at any rate, this concludes our coverage of the Forza Horizon 4 S1 Olympic Games qualifiers, and we will see you soon in the next video as we prepare for Championship Race Day. We'll be sure to give you all the details you desire, but for now, all we can say is stay tuned and watch to see who takes home Olympic gold in the final battle of nations. See you then.